Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out which quadrant we're in. So which quadrant, because this is your X and this is Y. So what quadrant on the unit circle has a negative X value and a positive Y value? Quadrant two. So in quadrant two, over here, all of my X values are negative and all of the Y values are positive. So I know that I am in quadrant two. And the other thing I know about quadrant two is as far as my, my trig functions, quadrant two, that's S, sine is gonna be positive and the cosecant is positive. So that's important. Okay, so when we have our ordered pair, the X is your, always your adjacent. The Y is your opposite. So when you have your triangle, let me go ahead and draw my triangle. When I have my triangle in quadrant two, theta is right here, adjacent to theta, because theta is always closest to the origin. Adjacent to theta, to theta is x, so that would be four, and opposite is your two. So what you need to find is your hypotenuse. So go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem, find your hypotenuse. Okay. <clears throat> and I usually ignore the negative and I just put those back in at the end. So I make, I write all six, and then at the very end, I go in and put in my negatives. Because when you're talking about the length of a side, we, we, are, we look at the absolute value, okay? But I don't want to get all complicated because it's, it's not complicated. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we got four squared plus two squared equals your hypotenuse squared. So remember, you won't be able to use a calculator on your quiz next Wednesday, so I encourage you to try to do this without a calculator. So two, four squared is 16, two squared is four. So that gives you 20, which was not a perfect square. So that means that we're gonna have a radical, which aren't fun, but we know how to handle it. So, Okay, so I had to just move that around a little bit to give myself some space. So now we're gonna take the square root of 20. 20 is not a perfect square, but what is the perfect square that is a factor of 20? So if you think of your factors of 20, 20 can be broken down to one times 20. Well, we don't do one times 20, but two times 10 and four times five. But which pair has a perfect square in it? So are either one of these numbers a perfect square? Okay, what about either one of these numbers? Yes. So four times five. So I'm gonna break this down to four times five. Equals H. So my hypotenuse is two root five. So I have my three sides of my triangle. So let me go back to the triangle that I created. And now I know that the hypotenuse is two root five. So I have all three sides and I, and I always like to label them with the words too. So this is adjacent, this is opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. 
So go ahead, take a minute and write all six ratios. So this time they didn't give us any of the ratios. So we need to find all six. So we have a cosine of theta. cosine theta and then it's sister secant but we'll start with cosine so what is the cosine what two sides do we use for cosine adjacent over the hypotenuse so that would be 4 over 2 root 5 we do have to rationalize that So we have four root five. I'm gonna show all the steps times two times the square root of 25, which is four root five over two times five. Two times five is 10. So we end up with four square root of five over 10 which can reduce to 2 root 5 over 5. So we had to do a lot for that one. So I'll give you a second to copy down the steps because I'm going to have to erase some of that to make room for the other ones. Any questions about how we got to that final answer? So the first thing we did was we wrote our ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse has a radical in it, so we had to rationalize that by multiplying by the square root of five, top and bottom. So in the numerator, we had four square root of five over two times the square root of 25. And square root of 25 is five, which gave us a 10, and then we could reduce the four over 10 to become two over five. Okay, so let's move on to its sister. So I need to erase this so we have the space to do all six. So we have our two root five over five. So now let's do our sister. The sister for cosecant is secant. So secant equals the reciprocal of cosine but I don't want to use the reciprocal that we have here because then I'll have to rationalize it again so cosecant is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent so cosecant is hypotenuse over adjacent so let me go back to our triangle here the hypotenuse is 2 root 5 the adjacent is 4 I can reduce that to over four and it becomes the square root of five over two. Okay, so next we have the sine. So for the sine of theta, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is two, the hypotenuse is two root five, so that would be two over two root five. We gotta rationalize this one, which gives us two root five over two times five. which is two root five over 10. And that simplifies to the square root of five over five because two over 10 reduces to the square root of five over five. So let's go ahead and do our sister for 
sine, which is cosecant. Cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over opposite. So the hypotenuse is 2 root 5, and the opposite is 2. This reduces to just a 1, so we end up with just the square root of 5 as our final answer. You could also write it as the square root of 5 over 1, if that makes you feel like better, you know. I would take either one of those for a full credit. Those are the hardest four because those four have the square root in them. They use the hypotenuse. The last two, tangent and cotangent, we only use opposite and adjacent. So that's pretty simple to do. So tangent on the right way over here. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is two over four, and that reduces to just one half. Writing all six takes a lot of space, so I'm trying to figure out how to fit it. So I usually put the negatives in it last, but it will be negative. Yes, it will be. So I usually write all six, and then I go in and add my negatives. I guess I'm kind of weird like that. It's just easier for me not to think about the negatives until I have all six ratios. And then for the last one, but you can do it whichever way you are more comfortable doing it. It's really no wrong way to do it. So cotangent of theta is going to be the reciprocal, which is 4 over 2, or just 2. So now, now that I have them all, I'm in quadrant 2. The only two that get to stay positive are sine and cosecant. So these two right here that I have underlined in green, they stay positive because in quadrant two, they stay positive, okay? However, the other four, which I'm gonna highlight in pink, they have to become negative. So all four that you see, the pink underline, you have to put a negative with. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put those negatives in. So this is negative, this is negative, and then my tangents and cotangent are negative. So these are negative. Let me highlight the ones that are negative in quadrant two. Yes. So why are they negative? So in quadrant two, so we know, so we recognize that this was, we were in quadrant two because in quadrant two, um, because notice in our ordered pair that X is negative and Y is positive. So on, on just the coordinate plane in general, X is negative and Y is positive in quadrant two. So if you go back to the acronym that we talked about where it says all students take calculus or all students take trig right here, this tells you what's positive in each quadrant. In quadrant one, all are positive. In quadrant two, sine is positive. In quadrant three, tangent is positive. And in quadrant four, cosine is positive. So in quadrant two, sine is positive. And if sine is positive, so is the sister, which is cosecant. Everything else is negative. All right, so I'm gonna pass out a blank unit circle for you all to practice with. Um, four minute timer and so you all can just kind of get comf kind of you know just start practicing you know so we because we're back in guys all right and we're gonna do it again next week too we're gonna do it four or five times